Hello, I'm Dr. Sam and this is Dr. Sam's Health. A couple of days ago I came across a video of Alan Roberts' Every Damn Day Fitness. Check out his channel, he's hilarious. Uh, he was roasting a couple of YouTubers who claimed that in order to achieve your personal goals you have to adjust your diet and your training routine to your somatotype. I totally loved the video and I had a nice discussion with Alan's uh, followers on his YouTube channel and I realized that as a scientist, as a physician, uh, I should actually talk about the somatotypes and dispel some myths. So today we're going to talk about the truth about somatotypes and nutrition and training. First things first, I would like to talk about somatotypes in general. What are these? The concept of somatotype was introduced by William Sheldon. Uh, he was a medical doctor specialized in clinical psychology and he published his work in 1940. I specifically would like to focus on the timing of this publication and his research because I want you to understand really well what kind of scientific projects were taken on at that time. Just to give you a point of reference, Watson and Crick described DNA structure in 1952. So you can imagine what kind of knowledge we had about human anatomy, physiology, biochemistry uh, before that. The idea behind Dr. Sheldon's research was to try to describe human anatomy, human physique, and to try to associate different types of uh, body composition to specific personality or temperamental traits. And even in 1940, it wasn't a particularly new idea. Actually, I can remember from my medical school years that we were studying Ernst Kretschmer's classification of human body. He described three types of body composition, which were athletic, asthenic, and picnic, and actually tried to correlate these body types with uh, specific mental disorders, mental illnesses. For example, as a psychiatrist, I remember that there was a weak association between the picnic body type, which would be endomorph in Dr. Sheldon's uh, somatotypes, and uh, schizophrenia. Dr. Sheldon also came up with three body types, and he named them after the embryonic germ layers. There are three germ layers, which are called uh, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. And based on the type of tissues or organs that are developing from these uh, germ layers, he described three body types, which became accordingly an ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph. There is actually a huge overlap between Ernst Kretschmer's classification and uh, Sheldon's classification. You can see that uh, an ectomorph, for example, uh, looks pretty much like an aesthetic type in Kretschmer's classification, a, a mesomorph looks like an athletic type, and an endomorph looks like a picnic type. Interestingly enough, Dr. Sheldon did not focus on um, athletic performance or uh, uh, nutritional aspects or metabolic aspects of uh, body composition or body constitution. He actually was trying to link these body types to specific uh, personality traits, and he described them for each body type. From the get-go, I would like to say that there is nothing particularly wrong with this kind of research, especially in this kind of research scientific era. Uh, what he had done, he just described different body types, tried to correlate them with certain personality traits. Uh, researchers do it all the time. His research was corroborated by a number of researchers. Actually, I've just done a lead search on this topic, and I've figured out that there are studies that are referring to somatotypes and these studies were published in 2011, 2012. So my point is that there is some merit in trying to describe and classify different body types. At the same time, his original research project had a number of flaws and I don't want to get into minutiae here, but uh, his research was criticized. Uh, some of his co-workers not only criticized his research, but they came up with their own uh, versions of uh, somatotypes and somatotyping in general. Specifically, people would say that you cannot actually place everyone into one of three body types. There, are mu there must be way more body types, and they would be right. And Dr. Sheldon himself did not focus on just three body types. He actually used some sort of a spectrum. There was a scale for each element of his classification system, and uh, any person would be placed into the scale of 1 to 7 in terms of their ectomorphy, mesomorphy, and endomorphy. So in the end of the day, each person can be located 
somewhere in the spectrum and the pure ectomorphs, endomorphs and mesomorphs are quite rare. Also, somatotypes are not static. You might be an ectomorph, but if you start working out, you gain some muscle, you will eventually move towards being a mesomorph. Or, for example, if you are a mesomorph, the athletic type, if you do not work out, if you do not develop your muscles, if you gain some fat, you will start moving towards the endomorph type. In any case, it's been almost a century since the work of Ernst Kretschmer was published and uh, almost 80 years since William Sheldon introduced his classification, his somatotypes. We have learned a lot about human genetics, about human body in general. We know way more about nutrition, metabolism, sports science, and so on. So in the end of the day, this whole concept of somatotyping, it had some merit in 1940s, 50s, or 60s, but quite frankly, right now it's way outdated and it has transformed into something different. And the truth is that the basic principles remain the same. If you want to build muscle, you need to train. If you are a mesomorph, a pure mesomorph, likely it will be easier for you. If you're an ectomorph, you have long limbs, you are tall, you might not be able to lift very heavy weights, it will be more difficult for you to build muscle, but if you work out, you will build muscle. The same applies to weight loss. If you want to lose fat, you have to be in caloric deficit, whether you are an ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph. Doesn't really matter. So if you're trying to lose weight and you struggle with that, it's not because your diet does not match your somatotype. No. You simply fail to create caloric deficit. It doesn't really matter whether you are a, an ectomorph, endomorph, or mesomorph. If you create caloric deficit, you will lose weight. Guaranteed. The same applies to your macros. It doesn't really matter whether you're a mesomorph, ectomorph, or endomorph. If you take in a lot of carbs, you will have an insulin response. Your body will start converting this glucose into fat. If you're trying to build muscle, you have to consume more protein. Even if you're a mesomorph, if you are not consuming enough protein, you won't be able to build muscle. So to sum it up, somatotypes were described in 1940. It's a somewhat outdated concept, but at the same time it has its merit. But the truth is that somatotypes have little to do with you achieving your goals, whether it's losing weight or building muscle. If you want to build muscle, you have to make sure that you've got enough macronutrients for muscle building and then you have to give a stimulus to yourself by working out. If you want to lose weight, you have to create caloric deficit. So you should plan your training and your diet based on the goals, based on what you want to achieve, not your somatotype. So that's it for today. I hope I clarified things for you. I've got more comprehensive description of somatotypes and their relationship with the workouts and diet in my blog. Check out my website, drsamshealth.com. If you like my videos, hit the like button, subscribe. By all means, leave comments or questions. I'm always happy to have them. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. All the best.